Hey everyone, this is Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add UTMs to your Facebook ads. I'm also gonna give you a free tool that you can download that's gonna help you organize and create your UTMs. It's actually something that we use all the time for our clients. But then after that, I'm also gonna go inside Google Analytics and I'm gonna show you how you can analyze some of your data um, that you see now that you have UTMs installed. So we're gonna cover all that in this video, but uh, first, let me just start with a just a quick intro and explanation of of what are UTMs, but if you're already familiar with the, the explanation, the definition, you can just go ahead and skip to the next section which I'll show you how to add that inside your ads. So first of all, what are UTMs? Well, UTM is actually something you can add at the end of the URL and allows you to understand where is your traffic coming from. So think of it as like a, a label and you wanna label all your different marketing channels, maybe campaigns and ads. So then you can use a third party tool like Google Analytics and understand really what's performing and potentially what's not performing. So now let's get into the fun stuff. So I'm gonna show you how you can add your UTM. So right now I'm in my demo ad account. I'm just gonna navigate to the ad section and here I have a demo ad so I can edit this and obviously if you're creating a real campaign you're gonna select your Facebook page you're gonna upload either your image or your video and fill all this information up but then if you scroll to the bottom here you're gonna see a little input box where you can add your website URL now you can actually just paste your UTMs right there directly um, but for Facebook I actually like to use the build a URL per meter uh, tool but like I said, if ever you just wanna paste a UTM code there, that's totally fine. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna give you a tool that you can use that is free uh, to actually help you build your UTMs uh, from scratch. So I'm gonna click on this little tool here and the campaign source. Well, actually, first of all, there's lots of different ways to add UTMs. And like I said, it's just a label, it's a category. So there's no wrong way of doing it. But I personally found my own way of naming my ads, my campaigns and my ad set, and it really works well for me. And when I go inside Google Analytics uh, to analyze my data, I feel like it's really organized. So some people actually will name the campaign source just Facebook and then the campaign medium is gonna be like uh, CPC and in a campaign name they're gonna name it whatever the campaign name is and same thing with the campaign content I personally don't really like doing that I like to actually first of all the campaign source I like to name it Facebook ad and not just Facebook because I'm also using UTMs for my organic post and I want to keep the organic side of Facebook and the paid side of Facebook like separate I don't want to have that inside I guess that I don't want to use the same label for these two kind of like uh, audience so I will put Facebook underscore ad here and for campaign medium I like to create a variable and I'm actually gonna use the ad set name because think about it so whenever I'm opening up Google Analytics I'm let's say looking at the, the source so I'm, I'm clicking on Facebook ad and then once I open up the source usually it's gonna show me the campaign name well then I want to use the exact same campaign that I want to analyze. So that's why I use a variable here. Then when I click the campaign name, it opens up and shows me all the different uh, medium inside uh, the campaign. And uh, this is where I can see all my different ad sets. So it's a little bit like I'm looking inside ads manager, but inside Google Analytics, so I'm following the same structure. Um, and this is why I like using variable and naming my uh, the medium, my ad set name for Facebook ad. Now campaign name is gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna create a variable and uh, campaign content. Again, same thing, I'm creating a variable. Now, one thing I just want you to note here is if ever you are using a variable and you decide to, I don't know, change the ad name, well, as they're, they're giving you a little warning message here, it's saying that if ever you do do that, it's not gonna change the UTM, like the, the ad name isn't gonna change. So it's gonna use whatever value that you've set it when you publish your campaign. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. If ever you're going to make changes to an ad and also rename it, actually, first of all, I, I wouldn't recommend you to do that. I always recommend that you duplicate the ad. Um, and then when you duplicate it, it's a new ad and then you can just name it whatever you want and then upload that new video and then it's gonna be like starting from scratch so they're gonna use uh, that variable is gonna be the that new ad name so um, just keep that in mind you can't change the name of the uh, 
content, campaign name, or medium uh, when it's published. Now, if you hit apply here, it's automatically gonna apply under the website URL. That's why I'm saying that you could just paste a website URL here that has a UTM. Great, so now I wanna show you this tool that you can use to organize and create your UTMs. So like I said, Facebook, it kinda takes care of that, but even though I recommend that you actually add all your different UTMs here, it's really, really important that you're consistent with your naming convention. Because let's say you use Facebook underscore ad as your source, you can't change it in a few weeks from now to facebook.ad or Facebook ad altogether. It's gonna create a lot of problems and now you're gonna have like two different different sources for the same thing. So it's really important that you write it down and like I said, that you're consistent. So I recommend that you actually go ahead and download this uh, Google Sheet. The link to download this is gonna be in the description of this video and add all your different uh, source here. So if you have a local business and you're utilizing Google My Business, well, create a source here. The source could potentially be, uh, you know, GMB, the medium, uh, organic search and the campaign name Google My Business. And you actually don't need to add a content. Um, that's just not a required field. By the way, what is required is the source, medium, and campaign name, but you do not need to give a content name. So that's optional. So you can go through this. Like I said, Google My Business is a good one. Let's say you're doing Snapchat, Pinterest. Uh, you know, There's a lot of different marketing channels out there, but seriously go through all your different marketing channels and create UTMs and keep it there. And that's something that you can save in the drive. And if ever you're like, oh, damn it, I forgot what I use as a source name. You can go back to this Google Sheet and say, okay, that's true. That's, that is what I use and name my sources for Snapchat, for example. Okay, so now that you know exactly how to add UTMs to your Facebook ads, and you also have access to this tool so you can create and organize your UTMs, I wanna show you how you can go about analyzing your campaigns inside Google Analytics because that's really what's important here. So I'm going to Google Analytics, and right now I am in a demo account. So whenever you sign up for Google Analytics, you can actually get access to uh, one of their demo account. So this is not my data, and uh, it's all dummy data, okay? Um, so there's a few different ways that you can take a look at your campaigns. I'm gonna show you a few. So number one is actually by navigating to acquisition and you can open up campaigns. So pretty easy. And I'm just gonna select all campaigns and here they're actually labeling, uh, they're labeling by campaign name. So that's why I love using a campaign name variable because let's say I'm in ads manager and I'm really just comparing the data from ads manager to Google Analytics. Well, I can just look, okay, well, here's a campaign name. I'm gonna be able to see that exact same name here and see how many uh, users, clicks, and potentially transaction this specific campaign is generating inside Google Analytics. And then let's compare the data and see what is happening inside Ads Manager so I can see if the data is similar or is one tool reporting more than the other. So that's again why I like to label it this way. But then what I then what I can do is I can open up my ad set now and let's say we have more than one ad set doing the same thing here. So I'm opening this up. So let's actually just pretend that the uh, campaign that I just opened is this one here. Like again, it's not gonna match because those are two different demo accounts. But here we have the source uh, medium. So in this example, we would be able to see Facebook underscore ad here. And in the medium, I don't know if you remember, but that's what we, uh, for us, we use the ad set name. So we would be able to see demo here because that's what I have as my ad set name. So. Again, do the same thing. You can compare the data and see what you're getting on your ad sets and see if it kind of matches what you get inside uh, Ads Manager. But also what I like to do here is add the ad content. So I'm adding the ad content here and right now we only have one, but Let's say that inside your campaign, you had multiple ad set, okay? And let's pretend that you weren't actually using the naming convention that I uh, showed you early in the video. Let's say you actually use CPC. Well, now you run into the issue where, sure, you can take a look at the source because the source, let's say it's Facebook uh, ad, but then how are you gonna know which ad set is where, right? Because if, if all your medium is CPC, then 
all really, all the data that you have is the campaign and the ad name, and you won't really be able to analyze your ad set properly. I mean, there's definitely ways, but for me, I think it's much more organized when you're using the campaign variable, ad set variable, and ad variable. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, so this is one main reason why I don't like using CPC as my medium name. But then here we have the ad content and the same thing that we did for campaign and ad set, you look, compare the data and see what you get inside Google Analytics. Now, like I said, that's one way of taking a look at it. One other thing that you can do is you can go to all traffic and you can take a look at uh, different channels. So now you can say, okay, well, show me by the source or right now we are using a default channel grouping, but you can actually create your own channel grouping. Now I won't get into that in this video, but that's definitely something I recommend that you do. And you can go to settings. And if you scroll down here, there's an option uh, right here to custom channel grouping and you can create your own channel grouping. And you can say, for example, for any user that has a source Facebook underscore ad, well, label that as Facebook ads. Um, if ever they have Google underscore ads, well, that means they're coming from Google ads. If ever the source is uh, GMB, well, that actually means that they uh, did a local search and saw the Google My Business and clicked that link to access the website. So you can create all these different channels here and then go back to acquisition, all traffic channels, so you can take a look at how much revenue or leads a certain channel is generating. So that's another great way to look at it. I also like to go under conversions and click on multi-channel funnels. And then you can actually click on model comparison tool. And this is kind of where I love having my own channel because I would uh, select a different channel. So under channel grouping, I would select a new channel grouping that I created and I would be able to see Facebook ad, Google ads, Google My Business, I'll say direct traffic, all labeled properly. And then I can take a look, okay, if, well, if it's the last interaction, what channel is generating what? Are we actually getting more uh, traffic and sales via Google Ads as last interaction? Oh, okay, what about if I change to first interaction? Well, potentially now I'm gonna see that uh, if we're looking at revenue generated and we attribute the sale to first interaction, Facebook is actually dominating right now because they're actually finding out about our business and products via Facebook. So there's different models that you can use to attribute the uh, sale or lead because Facebook ad, they don't really give you that much option. So that's why I like using Google Analytics. With Facebook ads, it's, they're using their own uh, attribution model model, but here you can control it and try different things and uh, potentially get different stories. So guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully this video was valuable and uh, you learned something new. And if you did, I would really appreciate that you give this video a thumbs up. And if ever you'd like me to cover a specific topic about either Facebook ads or Google Analytics, let me know in the comments because I mean, I know a lot about Google Analytics. I use it every day and I'm sure I can uh, teach you one thing or two. So let me know what you would like to learn about either uh, Google Analytics or Facebook ad. Maybe you'd like me to do a like deep dive on how I analyze my campaigns inside Google Analytics but you let me know and I will make the video. But again, guys, this is it for this video. Bye for now.